Christianity is unique among world religions for a lot of different reasons. Now, obviously, most dispositively, because although we believe that other religions have glimmers of truth in them, God has revealed himself savingly and redeemingly only in Jesus Christ. But it's, Christianity is also unique for sociological reasons. Um, the, the missiologist Andrew Walls points out that Christianity is the only religion that has had multiple kind of heartlands or centers of gravity um, in its history. Christianity, of course, starts out in Jerusalem, and then it moves out to Antioch and into Asia Minor, into the whole Mediterranean basin, and then North Africa, places like Egypt, places like Ethiopia. Um, those are really where the, the major theologians are in the early church, P people like uh, Basil the Great and Gregory Nazianzus, people like uh, Augustine of Hippo and, um, and Tertullian and Origen and people like that. Um, who you will see quoted regularly as, as uh, important pillars or fathers of church fathers. One of the things that is remarkable about Christianity, though, is that the, the center of gravity migrates. So even though the center started in Jerusalem and then moved out to, to Asia Minor and to North Africa, it then moves into Europe. Um, so so the, Europe becomes the kind of historic heartland of Christianity. From there, it kind of moved west to the American context, and again moved back to sub-Saharan Africa and to uh, into Southeast Asia uh, in, in, in the 20th century. So one of the most remarkable things that happens over the course of the 20th century, as the missiologist Scott Sundquist points out, is that there was a dramatic shift, uh, kind of an unprecedented shift in church history uh, in, in terms of where the center of gravity is in, in historic Christianity, in the heartland of Christianity, um, over the course of about 100 years. So when the 20th century started, uh, Christianity was about 80% located in the historic West. So places like Europe, uh, Canada, um, the United States of America, and so forth. Uh, and about 20% in the global South. So Sub-Saharan Africa and Southeast Asia and places like that. But by the end of the century, as Sunquist points out, that number was almost exactly reversed. It's as if someone squeezed the balloon so that all of the energy and vitality and growth move from the North to the South. And that's not primarily because you know, Christianity became sclerotic and began to shrink in those historic heartlands, but because Christianity grew so dramatically in places like the global south. Uh, so one of the most remarkable things that happened in the 20th century was the growth of, of Christianity in sub-Saharan Africa. So uh, Sunquist points out in his book that sub-Saharan Africa went from being about 9% Christianized uh, in, 19, in 1900 to about 45% Christianized in 2000. And the majority of that growth happened actually from 1960, from the moment that Africa began to be decolonized uh, to, to the 2000. So that growth was, uh, was dramatic and even unprecedented in the whole history of Christianity. Now, these trends have had an effect, a dramatic effect on Anglicanism, which is a global communion and has been really since the 19th century. While its resources have remained kind of in the north, the, uh, the, the balance of its, its energy and its vitality and its growth have all moved to the global south. So when we look at Anglicanism right now, there's like almost a lopsidedness to it in terms of where the energy is, where the vitality is, where the growth is in the communion. Um, although uh, Anglicanism has shrunk considerably in the United States and in England and in Canada and places like that, the historic kind of heartlands of Anglicanism, it has grown dramatically in sub-Saharan Africa. Nigeria has the claim to being the largest Anglican providence right now. It claims about 22 million Anglican Christians, uh, but Uganda and Kenya and Rwanda are very close behind that in terms of total numbers and, and in terms of numbers of people who are in church on Sunday morning and in terms of energy, in terms of missional um, focus, in terms of the, the kind of work they're doing uh, to, to engage in, in the repair of the social fabric. But also in the last 18 years, what we've seen is a dramatic growth of Anglican Christianity in Southeast Asia. Now, a lot of that is coming out of a single diocese, the Diocese of Singapore. Now, you know, uh, at Ascension, we have a strategic missional partnership with, the, with the, the work that the Diocese of Singapore is doing in Thailand. But that work in Thailand is only a, a single aspect or facet of the work that the Diocese of Singapore is doing more globally. They've also got deaneries in Indonesia and in Malaysia and other places. So this work is happening, that it's happening through the Diocese of Singapore is dramatic. Uh, and we've seen the Living Church just, pu just published uh, a piece where they, they documented the growth of, of Anglican Christianity in Southeast Asia. And they've shown that over 18 years, about 500,000 new Anglican Christians have converted. Uh, over the past 18 years. It's a pretty remarkable growth 
in Southeast Asia as well. So these trends um, have bled back in some ways into the United States context where we found our own ACNA to be revitalized through this missional work. It's almost a cross-missional work uh, or a reverse missional work coming from the global south into the global north again.